Howdy there folks, this is Lapidary Dave, and today I will be carving this beautiful piece of African smoky amethyst. I bought it at the Miners Co-op during the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. I scrubbed down the back to get all the loose dirt off. All the red stuff you see here is earth from Mother Africa, and uh, that's not coming off. I think it's beautiful. Uh, yeah, there's the back dry. This face I wet so that you folks can see some of the color. I will be grinding this slightly around the edges to dome it a bit and then polishing it and then I'll be drilling it on one of the sides. Fantastic piece. Um, I bought this material from uh, a group of vendors that I lost the card for. I'm very sad about that because this was a very affordable material. This material was, I believe, five... no. Yes, $20 for five pounds of this beautiful smoky amethyst. Some people might not be into like the shape raw, but what I did is I sliced those bad girls up. I end up with two sides. I, um, yeah, and I'm left with some fantastic material with some fantastic color that I can easily uh, carve. So for me, this was a huge pleasure. I believe I bought 20 pounds. Uh, every, any one piece, I, I can carve three or four pieces and pay off everything. Um, I'm really sad that I lost their card because they gave me a piece, two stones as a gift. And what those two stones were, were um, Tanzanian quartz or Quartzite or Adventuring. Comes in two colors uh, that are really being pushed right now. This green that goes by the name Emerald Tanzarine, and then there's a Strawberry Tanzarine. And uh, that one I believe is red and has lithium in it. I'm really ashamed that I lost the red stone that goes with this green stone. It's about the same size and I was gonna carve them together and plug those fantastic vendors who bless me with the fantastic price of this material and bless me with these two gifts. There is, however, a video on YouTube of a gentleman, I believe his name is Fernando, who has two quick, quick, quick videos of two pieces of tangerine he carved. He carved one of each, the red and the green. Check out that video. I will be saving this until I get another piece of that red. It's a shame it probably won't be from the same vendors, but keep an eye out for this Tanzarine. I see it um, going by the name of uh, uh, Tan Tanzan was it? Uh, excuse me, uh, Tanzanian Quartzite Adventuring. But now it has that cool name, Tanzarine, so check it out. Anyway, I'm rambling. Um, I promise I will be getting that card next year at the Miners Co-op if they're there. And uh, I'll let you folks know uh, where to get this fantastic material. Anyway, let's get a carbon. All right, folks, I'm here at the old Easy Cab. Uh, yes. I'm going to dome it just a little bit using my 80 grit hard wheel. Try not to lick too much of the face. Uh, because the finish left by the saw, professional lapidary saw, the high-tech brand 10-inch slab and trim saw I used, is a finer finish than what can be left by this 220 wheel. Uh, but yeah, one step at a time. First the two, um, excuse me, first the 80 grit hard wheel. Alright folks, this is what I did using my 80 grit hard wheel. Uh, domed it just a wee. Try not to lick the face too much. I don't think I did at all. Some of the uh, red hard earth here is showing from the front. That's fine by me. I'm not sure where I'm going to drill her at yet. But um... Right now, I'm going to the 220 hard rail.
Alrighty folks, here's the stone dry, there's the surface, you can see all the scratches look to be uniform. I'm not worried about those pox there, those fractured thingies, I'm worried about the scratches. All that natural stuff can stay there. Yes. Um, let me take a look at the sides to make sure that they, all the scratches on the sides have been replaced with uh, 220 scratches. A good lapidary should be looking at their stone almost as often as they are grinding. It's looking alright to me. On to the 280 hard wheel. Excuse me. Soft wheel. This stone's pretty cool. Um, it's African smoky quartz. A lot of it comes in chevron, I guess African smoky chevron. A lot of it seems to have uh, some citrine in it, not this particular piece. Um, a very affordable material. A little bit harder than Thunder Bay Amethyst from Canada. I believe that's the very stone that is Orlai 23. If I'm not mistaken. I totally could be. But um, I've carved both not too long ago at the gem show, and Thunder Bay and Oralite 23 is definitely softer than this stone. But this stone is definitely softer than a lot of um, Chinese amethyst points that I've gotten and carved. Anyway, on to the 280. Alright folks, I was just having way too much fun. Um, this is my 280 grit sanding polish, diamond sand. Here's the back. Uh, I don't know if you can tell on this camera. But uh, all that red earth I left pops right through the crystal. Uh, yeah, I can't see it on the camera, but um, all the orange from the red really bleeds through and it's beautiful. Um, yeah, now to drill this, sweetheart. I'm actually going to pause the video now so I can think on this for a second. I really enjoy this piece even though I have a lot of this material. This piece is special to me. So I will be back. Alright folks, I'm back and I'm ready to drill this sweet little piece of smoky amethyst. Alright folks, that's the hole. Looking awesome. I decided to um, drill from the front rather than the back. I thought I was going to drill from the back to try to spare some of the stuff on the back. Because I can't go back and clean that up if I want to keep it raw. Um, where I can clean it up if it blows out in the front. Although I did do it the normal way, all the blowout came out in the front, which is fantastic. I can clean that up in no time on the 280 wheel. Anyway, yeah, successful drill. Alright folks, I'm going to go ahead and um, lick the face of the stone to try to clean up some of the blowout. Uh, yeah, shouldn't take too long. I don't know if you folks can tell, but um, that hole is a lot cleaner than it was. Let me wet it up for you, maybe it'll be easier to see. Yeah, nice clean hole. Not perfect, but I'm not worried about it. Now I'm going to go on to my 600 grind. Everything's downhill from here. I'm just going to sit back and enjoy the grind. Already starting to take a fantastic shine. This material is awesome. I wish I knew where in Africa it was from. If I had the card from the people who sold this to me, I could totally ask them.
right, folks, that's my 600 grit grind dry. There's the stone wet. All kinds of fantastic colors popping through. I wish you folks could see all the orange that's uh, coming through from all of the orange on the back. But I actually think my computer's a little bit colorblind. It kind of changes a few colors. I used to use a heater up here, and instead of it being red, like I'm seeing, it would come out blue on my computer. So a little colorblind or something. But nonetheless, I'm sure you folks believe me. This thing is beautiful. Beautiful piece. 1200 grit, we're almost done. I'm having a bite. All right, folks, this is my 1200 grit polish dry. Here's the stone wet. dried off already. Thirsty little stone. Already at 1200 grit she has a fantastic polish. Um, my watering system has been broken for a while and it was literally held together with gum. So I can still grind but my water is coming out very fast so I have to work fast. Shouldn't be a problem. I'm going to finish this up on the 3000 grit. See you there. Alrighty, folks. This is my 3000 grit polish. Looking fantastic. On this camera, you can almost see the orange coming through. To my naked eye, it is glowing orange from the face. Uh, yes. This came out fantastic. The back takes a lot longer to dry because it's rough. But that side looks fantastic too. But it can go a little bit further. I actually have a 14,000 grit belt to replace um, 14,000 grit. Uh, diamond paste, which would really take this over the top, but I don't have that set up yet on my other machine, so I'm going to use some compound, I believe it's like some kind of tin oxide or something, in the form of Fabulous. Fabulous works a lot like this Zan stuff. I'm going to put it on a little wheel and burnish my stone with the compound. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm going to go do that. I believe braid this up, and I'll see you folks inside. All right, folks, here's that finished piece, freshly burnished, leaving the finish around eight to 12,000 grit. Fantastic. I braided it using this brown artificial sinew, put a little uh, piece of turquoise, a little bead that I reamed, uh, so that this necklace bit is adjustable and um, can be adjusted to hang in all the right places. Here's the back. Love the natural back. Great shine. I love uh, Mother Africa covering the stone. Uh, yeah, this stone is uh, African smoky amethyst. Some of it has chevrons, let me find a piece for you. Here you go. Some of it is chevron. Uh, some of it's just smoky amethyst. Some of it has citrine in it. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, I paid twenty dollars for five pounds. I think I bought twenty pounds. I have a whole bunch to carve, and after I carve all these sweethearts, I have a whole bunch more to cut in half to carve. Um, thank you, folks, for hanging out with me. I promise when I get the information um, on. Who were the vendors exactly who sold this to me? I will be more than happy to share that. I'm sure they'll have more than enough of this amethyst to sell for the same price next year. Also, don't um, forget to check out the tanzarine that's popping off like crazy right now. I wish I still had my red piece. I'd carve both of these, but I don't. 
Anyway, this is Lapidary Dave. Thank you for hanging out. This piece is fantastic. There's a lot of love in this piece. Um, a lot of at in intention and direction. This is a little personal piece for me. I love it. Thank you so much, folks. Have a great day. Great night. See you next time.